Hi everyone, it's Grax Domain here, and last year I decided to make a big change in my mobile phone. I changed from an iPhone 3GS to a Samsung Galaxy S2. That's right, an Android. And the main reason for this was because I was getting bored with the iPhone and with the iOS in general, and I just wanted to see if there was actually anything different out there, something better, potentially better for me. And in my mind, I made a good choice. I am very, very happy with my Samsung Galaxy S2. Now, I bought my Samsung Galaxy S2 back in October 2011. And at that time, it had the gingerbread operating system, which I think was 2.3.5. And it also had the launcher software launcher. I'm not really sure what it's called, but it had TouchWiz. My mobile provider was O2, and they announced that ice cream sandwiches available on my phone by the end of March 2012 and that time came and I was all over that ICS downloading and installing on this thing and now my phone was running ICS but what did I think of ICS the main difference that I noticed was a slight increase in performance on the phone itself and there was a whole bunch of tweening nice animations with the whole phone in terms of turning out from landscape to portrait and vice versa with everything reorienting itself. One thing that's worth noting is that I am not using the native Android keyboard nor am I using the swipe keyboard. I'm using this keyboard called Swift Key X. And in my mind it is the best keyboard I've ever tried out for the Android mobile device. And I would recommend you buy it and use it right now. I'll post a link in the description down below. So good things will round, but I did notice there's a couple of programs which became more unstable, like Winamp. Despite this, it was a nice improvement from gingerbread to ice cream sandwich, and it was still using TouchWiz as the launcher. Despite this increased performance of ICS, I had this feeling that I could do better. I felt that there was something better for me in terms of the mobile phone. And that was when I decided to look into custom ROMs. Now, for the people who are not in the know on what a custom ROM is, it's nothing more than the Android operating system for phones and tablets, which have been customized by the programming community in general. And this allows a programmer to add or remove certain functionality that they desire. After searching online for various forums for solutions, I came across a guy called Max Lee, aka Zetabax. Hi folks, this is Max from HighOnAndroid.com. This guy is a complete and utter Android enthusiast, and he has an entire collection of websites which are dedicated to routing Android devices and installing custom ROMs upon them. This guy also had a video tutorial on how to unroot and unbrick your Samsung phone if it all goes wrong or you need to send the phone back for warranty reasons. Max Lee's online videos on how to root and install custom ROMs onto Android devices makes the whole experience far less daunting than it would be just by looking on forums alone. If you're interested, I will post links down at the bottom in the description to take you to one of his various websites. So now, after viewing all his various tutorials online, I felt confident in routing and installing a custom ROM on my phone. And the ROM I decided to choose in the end was the Resurrection Remix Pro, under Max Lee's advice, which he says this is one of the best ROMs available on the phone to date. One thing that's also worth noting in this case, and has been noted various times on the internet, is that if you decide to root your phone, if you decide to install a custom ROM on your phone, you may invalidate the warranty. I followed the instructions that were provided by Zdomax to the letter, and I managed to root and install the Resurrection Remix Pro ROM onto my Samsung Galaxy S2. But what were my first impressions of Resurrection Remix Pro after I installed it on my Android phone? Man, I was completely blown away by how good it is in terms of the user interface. The TouchWiz launcher interface has been completely removed to be replaced by the Apex launcher, which for me is so much more better. For one thing, instead of the typical five 
icons at the bottom, you can scroll left and right to be able to store more icons if need be. And bringing down the notification bar, you can see that there are much more options to go through, ranging from activating, deactivating the Wi-Fi, the data, changing the brightness of your screen, so many more options on the top screen than what was provided before. The speed and performance was still just as fast and slick as the stock version of Ice Cream Sandwich, and it still contained the tweening animation effects between switching from portrait to landscape. And check this out. You see that? Simple music controls within the lock screen. You see, it's not that hard. Come on Android, you should be doing this natively. And even Winamp can learn a few lessons from this. I mean, come on. The iPhone, the iOS can do this without having to download any external app. For shame, Android, for shame. One thing that's worth noting about Resurrection Remix Pro is that it uses Google Music as its main music player. And because I'm in the UK, as of now, I can't get Google Music. I've tried. I've tried looking on Google Play for this application and I couldn't find it. Another positive thing about this ROM is the battery life. I feel that the battery life has improved on my phone by about 15%. Now, yes, this is a kind of a made-up number, but this is just generally on the look and the feel of me using it. If I use my phone carefully, I can get a charge to last two days. Now, granted, this is ensuring that I don't use my phone as a phone. I turn off my Wi-Fi and my data connections most of the time, and I only check my emails and the internet sporadically. So, really, I'm not using it at all. Otherwise, if I'm using it typically in terms of checking my emails and internet and social medias, I can get about a day and a half out of a charge, which is pretty good nonetheless. Now that I had my phone completely rooted and I had complete and utter control, I decided to have a go at installing some overclocking apps like SetCPU. Not with the idea of overclocking my phone to make it faster, but underclocking my phone to save battery power. But after a few quick attempts at reducing my speed, I kind of noticed that the animations and the feel was very jerky and, well, frankly, I'm spoiled. I didn't want to have my user experience ruined by jerkiness. So I gave up the plan to overclock or underclock my phone. Overall, this ROM is very stable and all my previous apps work absolutely fine, with the possible exception with the native camera. For some reason, trying to start up this application caused some slowness and jerkiness but for some reason after using the app three or four times it seems to work fine now so i don't know whether that was an initial startup bug or whatever but i thought it might be worth mentioning this at this point the version of resurrection remix pro that i installed on my phone is version 1.1 at the time of this video being released there is a version 1.2, which includes functionalities of performance tweaks, things like overclocking, underclocking, etc. But as previously noted, I didn't feel the need to install these kind of performance tweaks on my phone since I not had much luck. So I decided to not upgrade to version 1.2. The main reason is I'm so happy with what I've got right now. I don't feel the need to tweak it anymore. Now, that leads on to a nice little segue to the one big question. Should I take a plunge? Should I root my phone or tablet device? Should I install a custom ROM upon it? Will I get a better Android experience? Now, yes, those are a whole bunch of questions, not just one, but just roll with me here. Let me answer those questions with a simple statement. If you are happy with your Android phone or tablet, if you're happy with its general speed, with its functionality, with its apps, with the general feel of your device, then no, I wouldn't recommend you go and root your phone or tablet. There's no need to, you're happy with it. If it's not broken, then don't fix it. But if you're not happy with your device, 
if you think you can get a little bit of a better experience, something a little bit faster, a bit more stable, slightly better, more of options, then yeah, totally take the plunge, completely and utterly. Root your phone, tablet, whatever it is, do it, you won't regret it. And if it does go wrong, there are ways to revert back to stock. All that's required is a little bit of research and a little bit of preparation and you too can have yourself a rooted device with an installed custom ROM. Go online, find the best ROM for your device, find the best tutorial for your device and go for it. You can get out of it and who knows, your device might end up being the best device for you. Thanks for watching this video and I really hope it helps you making your Android related roaming decisions. I'll post a whole bunch of links down below to help you with your decision. And I'll see you next time.